What's up guys? I'm gonna compare these five Wi-Fi 7 routers by TP-Link. This is the Archer series, starting from the least expensive BE9300, working our way up to the most expensive BE900. I have done individual speed test range tests for all of these. We will go over the, all those speed tests and range tests, and I have used the following Wi-Fi devices to get me those numbers. I have also done individual reviews for each one of these, so if you guys wanna go into a deeper dive, see what that what the app for that specific router looks like and things like that. Be sure to check out the links below. I will put those links below. I'll also put the product links below as well. Let's get started. Starting with the B9300, we have an LED bar that goes from the top to the bottom. We have three buttons in the front. We have a WPS button, a Wi-Fi button, and an LED on or off button. Let me zoom in so you guys could, I mean, <laughs> let me just bring it closer instead of, you guys got it. All right, so we got a 2.5 gigabit LAN port, the others are gigabit, and we got a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port, which is good because at least we have two. Now, so if we go in at 2.5, we'll come out at 2.5, so we're golden there. USB 3.0, factory reset, power, and then power on and off. We got rubberized feet, and we have pretty much vents at the top and at the bottom to keep it nice and cool. Now, the BE550 is pretty much the same exact thing with the same buttons and everything in the front, except really the only major difference is that all of the ports are 2.5 gigabits, so it's kind of like a slightly better version of the BE9300. Then we'll move on to the BE800, and this one we go up a notch because now we have four 2.5 gigabit ports and we have two 10 gigabit ports. And optionally, you can use the SFP Plus port or this gigabit port. You can't use both of these. Um, you could use this one and this one, but you can't use this and this at the same time. It's this or that. But basically, you could do 10 gig in and 10 gig out. So in my case, I, I would do 5 gig in and 5 gig out, and I'd be golden. And it would, again, SFP Plus port, USB 3.0, factory reset, uh, power, power on and off, and it's pretty much exactly the same as the other one, except it's a much beefier version, cooling everything. And then with this one, you got a lot more customization. So you can actually do some certain patterns. You can have a clock show. There's a lot of cool stuff, and you got the same exact buttons in the front. And then we got the BE900, which is very similar to the BE800. So let me show you guys that, except it has an extra port essentially and an extra USB 2.0 port. So as you guys can see, we've got 2.5s, 10 gigs, again, this or this. We got an extra gig right here. We have a USB 2.0 and a 3.0 and all the same other stuff. And again, the same, same stuff here, a lot of vents and cooling. And you could customize a lot more of the LEDs here, show time and everything like that. And then we have the very, very different GE 800. And normally I was gonna put this in between these, but Let's just, we're gonna go off order for this one. Uh, so we have an extra game boost button right here. Uh, we have LEDs that go up here, LEDs that show here. This kind of looks like Darth Vader a little bit. I don't know, what do you guys think? And we have a lot of fast ports essentially. We got 2.5 gigabit ports, we got a dedicated gaming port right there. Let me bring it closer. Uh, again, two 10 gig ports, or you could use the SFP Plus port. Uh, USB 3.0 power, factory reset, on and off. So very similar to all the other ones. And this is what the bottom looks like, rubberized feet again. And uh, yeah, this one has that Star Wars vibe. I actually really like this one. All right, so here are the power supplies. Two of them have exactly the same, and the other three are exactly the same as well. So we'll start off with the B9300 and the B550. Both of these are 100 to 240 volts. Output is 12 volts at 3.3 amps. So if you multiply those two numbers, you get 39.6 watts. And this is what the plugs look like. Again, exactly the same. And these are labels that I've applied because I have so many routers, otherwise I'd lose track on uh, what belongs to what. And these three are also all exactly the same. And the output is 100 to 240 volts. I I'm sorry, that was the input. Uh, the output is 15 volts at five amps, which is 75 watts of power right there. And again, plug, plug. So we're gonna start with the internet speed test. And as you guys already know, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speeds. Unless of course, the router itself can't go that fast. So in my case, my internet speeds are five gigabits per second upload and download. And these three can handle those speeds. Whereas these two were actually capping my speeds to 2.5 gigabits per second. Now on an ethernet connected device like my computer that can go up to those speeds, 
I, when I do a speed test, I do get the full 2.5 from here and I do get my full five gigs from here when I'm doing an internet speed test. Now the Wi-Fi devices are a different story. So typically they don't go as fast. So let's look at these numbers. The G800 took the absolute cake, especially for the Wi-Fi 7 section. And the BE900 took the cake for the Wi-Fi 6C section. But really what was the most impressive was the Wi-Fi 7 section on the G800. And the BE800 was also not too far behind. Next we get into local speed tests. So to really find out the true performance of these routers, I need to do a local speed test server. So I make my computer to the server and I go from Wi-Fi device to router to computer. And what this does is it isolates the router. So I'm no longer relying on my public speed test server nor the ISP not my public speed test server, my ISP, nor the public speed test server. So I get those two out of the equation and I get more consistent results and typically they're faster. So looking at these results, it looks like the BE800 took the cake for the Wi-Fi 7 download section and the GE800 took the cake for the Wi-Fi 7 upload section. Now I am going to give a huge props to the GE800 because it is very rare that I see speeds in excess of 4,000. That is very rare to see. So even though the B800 was almost there, but the G800 just took the absolute cake. Now for the Wi-Fi 6C, it looks like the B900 took the cake, whereas the other two aren't too far behind. Really, the B550 was actually almost as good as the BE900, which was very, very impressive. Next, we get into range tests, and range will vary drastically by locations because essentially the more obstructions you have, typically the less range you're gonna get. So if you're in between floors, if you have a lot of thick walls, things like that are typically going to hurt your range. So the more of an open area, typically the better range. All, all of these are tested in the same exact environment. So for me, at 20 feet away inside my place, I'm getting very good speeds, but typically the upload speeds do drop, as you guys could see across the board, they did drop, but they're all doing very, very well. At 50 feet away outside my place, again, a big drop, again, especially in the upload, but even in the download section, a big drop, but they're all still doing very, very well. It's kind of a mixed bag, but it does look like the G800 overall is doing the best, overall. And then at 100 feet, out, again, across the street, outside my place, obviously it'd be outside my place if it's across the street, uh, but yeah, still got some phenomenal numbers. Overall, the G800, Again, it looks like it's pretty much beating the rest. There are instances where others are uh, faster, like the B800 Wi-Fi 7 upload speeds. Um, but overall, I think the G800 is kind of a little bit taking the cake there. For the Tether app, this is what you this is what you use for setup and configuration, which is a Tether app, which is pretty similar to their Deco app. It's a very simple, clean user interface with a decent number of options. It does give you parental controls included in the price basic parental controls. And if you want more advanced parental controls, that does require a separate subscription. But the basic ones do come included with the router. And then you can separate out, depending on the router you're, we're talking about, there are some minor differences between the routers in terms of options. But in the big scheme of things, like for instance, with these, you can actually, inside the Tether app, you can actually customize the front of this as well, even make your own logos. This one, you could change the coloring of the lights. So this is what the app looks like. Well, this is the uh, the color section of what the app looks like. Uh, you could change it to the Comet, you could do the Wave, you could do Fire, you could do Ripple. So you could change it different ways that the colors will take effect. You could do Static. Uh, and then for static, like the custom colors, you can actually pick a color that you want. And then there's this whole spectrum of colors you could choose from. So if you're looking for a specific color, you could play around with that. And there are some additional options in there as well. And then you can also turn it off entirely, or you could turn it off at night. These two, it's just more of a, just like an on and off. I mean, these, all of these have the on and off, but this one, it's not really all that customizable. So there are some variation differences, but overall, they're all pretty similar to each other. So you could separate out the bands. You could separate the 2.5 and the 5 gigahertz if you wanted to. You can make a separate 6 gigahertz band. You can make a separate MLO band. You can make a separate guest Wi-Fi, and then you can make a separate Internet of Things Wi-Fi. They all support easy mesh, which means 
all of these are actually, again, support easy mesh. So if you got these two, you can actually combine them to each other and create a mesh network out of them if you wanted to, even though they're not exactly the same model number, or you could get the same exact model number as well, which is typically what I, I personally recommend. And then you also have VPN options as well. And so it gives you the main options that one would look for. So in a nutshell, which one is worth getting and why? Well, as always, it depends on your specific situation. So if you have internet speeds of up to 2.5 gigabits, any one of these two would work well. Now, I slightly prefer the B550 over the B9300 only because all of the ports support 2.5 gigabits. Now, the good thing with the B9300, you do have two of them that support 2.5 gigabits, so you can go in at 2.5 and come out at 2.5 and then you could just get a 2.5 gigabit switch if you want more 2.5 gigabit ports but it is nicer that the b550 does have all five of them are 2.5 gigabit ports and you might not even need a switch if you have more than really more than two devices or even more than one device that supports 2.5 gigabits so a slight edge to the b550 up to 2.5 gigabits and then for me because my internet speeds are five gigabits per second I would only consider these three and the price does make a difference. So if one is on a super sale, I would probably opt for that. But keeping everything retail, my most preferred router from this entire list is the one in front of me, which is the G800. I really like this thing. It has a really cool look. I mean, looks are subjective, obviously. So you might not look like the look or you might really like it. Who knows? I personally really like the look of this thing. It does kind of look like something straight out of Star Wars. This part kind of looks like that Darth Vader. And then the lights look really, really cool. But most impressive to me is not really its looks, but its performance. For the price, the performance on this thing is phenomenal. Now, I didn't beat everything in every single category, but overall, this was the best performing one. So my personal choice would be this one. Now, if you have internet speeds of up to 2.5 gigabits, you could obviously get any one of them. You can even get this one as well if you wanted to. Uh, but I usually tend to lean to more towards like if I could save some money, uh, like if I don't absolutely need that, then I would probably opt for something that's either on sale or a little bit cheaper just to get me what I need. But if you're planning on future proofing and things like that, I mean, this can go up to 10 gigs. So you are golden with this one. But let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. And as always, smash that subscribe button and I'll catch you guys in the next one.